Hokey dokey. In this problem, they give us a function f, and they ask f of x is an antiderivative of which of the following. So basically, they're saying if we took the derivative of this, which one of these functions do we get as a result? So we're basically reviewing derivatives in this type of problem. So we'll review the quotient rule as well as the product rule and a little bit of chain rule. So let's jump into it. So just to mention this minus four first, if we take the derivative of minus four, that'll go to zero because the derivative of any constant is zero. So we're mainly focused on the quotient here, the e to the x cubed, which we will call f, and the denominator 3x, which we'll call g, and then we'll find f prime and g prime and plug them in to the quotient rule respectively. So let's go ahead and do a different color. We'll do f prime here and g prime here. First thing, we'll start with g prime. So g is 3x. A constant times x has the derivative of just that constant, so just 3. f prime little trick here, e to the anything has the derivative of e to that anything. So that term is just repeated. But then chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside piece. In this case, that is the exponent. The derivative of x cubed is, using the power rule, we bring out the 3, we leave the x, and we subtract 1 from the exponent to get 3x squared. So we have f, f prime, g, g prime, and we will just plug them in to the quotient rule. Starting with f prime, we have e to the x cubed times 3x squared minus f, which is e to the x cubed times g prime, which is 3. And I almost forgot, there's a g after the f prime. So let's make some room should have been f prime times g. All right. And then all of this will be divided by g squared. So we'll have 3x squared. All right. It looks like they might have simplified this quite a bit. So let's see what we might be able to simplify. So starting with the denominator, what we can do is with 3x squared, we can actually treat that as 3x times 3x. And so what we can do with this is cancel out a 3 from the bottom with 1 from each of the terms on top. So canceling out a 3 on the bottom cancels 1 from here as well as 1 here. So then what are we left with? Or can we cancel anything out, uh, else out? And I don't think we can because what's on the bottom doesn't match a term from both this term and this term. So I think what we have left is just e to the x cubed times 3x squared times, we can't forget this x here. And what I'll do simultaneously is break up these two numerator terms over the denominator, so we actually have two fractions. So let me make this a little smaller here. All right. And so this is our first term with all these terms over this, and also there's this x on the bottom, I almost forgot. So one more x on the bottom, and then minus what was left from this term, so e to the x cubed, and again over the denominator. All right, so then can we cancel anything out amongst these individual terms? It looks like this first fraction has a lot we can cancel out. We have two x's here, in other words, x squared, that we can cancel. We also have an x squared on top. We also have a three on top and bottom that we can cancel. And then over here, I think it just has to stay the same. There's nothing that can cancel. So what we're left with is x e to the x cubed minus e to the x cubed over 3. x times x is x squared. So we're looking for these two terms 
and it appears they've written it in a backwards order, which is okay. Let's break out the eraser to see that D is our answer. Let's see if we can go ahead and do one more example using the quotient rule in this case. So let's jump into it a little bit faster. What I'll do is start off by labeling F and G as the numerator and denominators of the original function. And, and then again, the minus five has a derivative of just zero. So that goes away eventually. We want F prime. We want F prime, which would be the derivative of f here so again any e term is kind of just repeated for its derivative e to the something has a derivative of e to the something and that negative is out in front so that kind of just stays out in front as well then we need the derivative of the inside piece which is 1 over x squared 1 over x squared can be rewritten as x to the negative 2. We want to rewrite this as x to the something, so then we can use the power rule to find the derivative, bringing out the negative 2, leaving the x, and subtracting 1 to get negative 3 for the new exponent. So we have this for f prime. g prime would be the derivative of 2x, which is just 2. So we have all our pieces. It's now just a matter of plugging them in there. So we have f prime. What I'll go ahead and do is kind of simplify f prime by canceling out these negatives because a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'll call it positive e to the 1 over x squared. And I'll divide it by x cubed because if we have x to the negative 3 up top, we'll go ahead and throw it in the denominator as a positive exponent. And then I'm almost forgetting there's still a 2 that will stay on top with the e because the 2 is not being raised to the negative 3. The 2 has no exponent, so it just remains where it was up top while the x term goes to the bottom. So then g is 2x. We have minus f, which is negative e to the 1 over x squared times g prime, which is 2. And we divide this by g squared. All right, what can we cancel? Let's do the same thing we did last time. The bottom squared is just 2x times 2x. We can cancel a 2, a 2, and a 2 from each term. And then I think we'll be left with a similar situation here. So let's go ahead and break up this fraction. We have 2e to the 1 over x squared over x cubed. And then, if, and then there's also this x here. Can't forget about that. If we divide by 2x times x, or 2x squared, dividing by 2x squared is the same as multiplying by 1 over 2x squared. And so really, we can kind of just tack on 2x squared to the denominator there. So now we have minus a negative e term, so we'll do plus that same e term, and then divided by 2x squared, which was this denominator here. So hopefully, let's see if we can cancel anything else. It looks like this 2 and this 2 can cancel, so those are gone. And the other terms, it looks like there's this x and one of the x's from the bottom. So if we eliminate 1x, we should eliminate 1x from here, leaving us with just x cubed times x, which should equal x to the fourth. So hopefully we're looking for something like this, x to the fourth on the bottom, 2x squared on the bottom. Let's see if that matches anything. x to the fourth, 2x squared break out the eraser to see that C is our answer. Okay, so this video is a lot longer than I anticipated, so check out the next part for a product rule example.